We go. There we go. I think we're going, mate. Sonny, how you doing, mate? Good morning, Brett. Uh, see you in the office again. Ready? Yeah, for the- coming live from Boston, mate. Boston. Yeah, I like it. Uh, look at that, Dad. Dad. Dad said he set an alarm so he can make sure he watches us every week from India. Dad, well, listen, Dad, your first one in. Congratulations. Thank you for the support. Where is he? Is he in India still? Still in India. He's in India for another month. He's four weeks at, in, into eight-week trip. Loves it. Mate, mate, your dad lives a life, eh? Yeah. He's, God he's, love him. He's, he looks younger already. He's. He, I think he needed a holiday. He, uh, he's, he looks he's, like me. That's what he, he looks like. He does look like you. Yeah. Yeah, he does. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's my future. How old is he? My dad is 50. He's a... Uh, he, he's only a few years, all right. Yeah, mate, uh, world of swimming. What's happening? We're talking swimming. Let's get straight into it. Yeah, so uh, a few things happened this week. Um, I think things are just going to get busier and busier as we go through these shows as well because, uh, you know, more and more is going to start happening. But we had hmm. probably the first big meet in Europe this year, long course, the Luxembourg meet. So there was a few big hitters there. Uh, yeah. So I don't know. Did you see any of the results? Uh, we had Coleman Stewart over. Mm-hmm. Uh, he, he raced. He was average to say the best uh we had a uh, chad race the euro meet the, the, the euro meet is basically just like the first kind of big long course meet of the year hey for for europeans and it's in a good venue too right the venue looks amazing yeah chad, chad called me from it and it's like a massive pool big stands mm. um and the, yeah they give prize money they have podiums they have you know they, they're putting a show here they want they want swimmers to go and swim at this meet they want swimmers to care about it and you know, like, yeah, it's the first opportunity to sort of blow off them cobwebs from short course season. Nothing super sharp. You know, Ben won the 50 freestone 22 0, but, you know, it's just that first sort of break things in sort of meet. Yeah. But what are we, what are we getting ready for, really? Tell, tell me what this, this season looks like. Cause I sometimes lose track of this year a little bit. So what, what's actually happening this year? I think this year is the first time we're back to some sort of normality. And by that, I mean, there's not more meets than there should be. We have one major summer meet for the Aussies, the Americans, the Brits, the Europeans. It's the World Championships in uh, in the summer in Japan uh, at the pool that you've raced in. And yeah, it's, you know, so we've got trials next. Trials are as early as April for us in the UK, obviously a little later for, for the Americans. And we also have, well, this is news we probably can touch on, is then after World Champs is Asian Games in September, where the Russians and Belarusians will be able to compete and qualify for the Olympics at. That's, yeah, that's something oh. that happened this wow. week as well. Wow, that came out, did it? Yeah. So that's, that's some big be, news. Yeah. So they, they're not going to be racing under the Russian or Belarusian flag, but they haven't been doing that for the few years previously anyway, but they will represent themselves as individuals. And they, yeah, they can compete at the, the Asian Games um, and, you know, start getting them qualification times for the Olympic Games. God, man, this is sad. It's sad, really. I mean, this this war needs to end all round, you know, for everything, yeah. everybody. Uh, there's there's more at stake than swimming, but it just needs mm-hmm. to end. I'm just over over this war. Come on. So mm-hmm. powers that be need to do something. But, um, well, that's interesting. So, so this summer then. So I guess, I mean, it's still early days. It's, it's hard to get motivated in January, mm-hmm. isn't it, when you're thinking about – june july august type swimming you know but um i guess this is the time where you put the put the work in get it done right yeah yeah and it, it's it's work or it's just you know less pressure and it's you know just have a good time and do what needs to be done and not really stress about the times and you know you can go to these meets just for your own individual practice or you know you can try and make some money but i just i don't think that the prize money at meets like luxembourg are anywhere near good enough to actually like have a little bit of rest and you know try and be fast they're not like a world cup where you can come away with you know 50 grand or something they're like you can get some pocket money at best well speaking of that and and what's coming up and you're saying things are scaled back a bit uh, something that's not in this newsletter nate i mean beautiful <laughs> newsletter by the way he sends us he sends us these updates every week this newsletter it's uh if you if you're not subscribed to it um get on it it's uh, the swim nerd newsletter I forget what he calls it. He calls it something. Swim spam. I'm gonna, swim, I'm gonna, swim spam. Yeah, put, put it link. in. Yeah, put the put it in the link. But you know what's not in there? The news of the fact that the ISL had a massive, uh, you know, ruling go against them, and mm. I think it. I think it honestly spelled the death of the ISL. 
Yeah. So, so World Aquatics won that that hearing, right? So, uh, mm. Mm. yeah, it's, it's not good news for the ISL. A lot imagine. of miss. A lot of miss because you know what? Um, you know, I think the ISL were planning on winning that and then coming out with some big announcements in in January. We're at the end of January now, and I think the announcement is like, uh oh, we're in deep trouble here because we just lost. Um, you know, there's all sorts of fingers being pointed in, into why they lost. Um, one of the reasons that I heard is poor management from the lawyers of the ISL. You know, I heard that the, they're actually now in the process of suing their lawyers for for bad management of the whole case. Um, so, like that, now the ISL is turning on their own lawyers. So, I mean, what a what a mess, really. Um, but yeah, it kind, of, it kind of spells the death of the ISL, doesn't it? I think there's so many things, unfortunately, going against the ISL at the moment. They don't need another little, you know, push back and, you know, now in the coffin or whatever you want to call it. And it's just it's just sad because I just really think we need a team competition in swimming. Like, I don't know, it just I, – I've recently watched – I don't know how much you follow, follow football, but there's like – they basically put cameras behind the scenes for one of the biggest teams in England, Arsenal – and followed a whole season behind the scenes. And like, you can see why fans love it so much. And they like, they just care so much about their team. And no one, it's really hard to support anyone in swimming that much. I guess you get it a little bit in college sport, but we just, and people would really care about teams if the ISL went for 20, 30 years. That's how long you need before people are like, oh, mm. you know, I'm, I'm LA current to the bone sort of thing, you know? And I just, mm. Mm. we just, just need something. It can be small, but it just needs to be consistent. And the ISL was just unfortunately never going to be that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, all right. So I, I got off on a tangent there, but let's go back to the Euro meet real quick. You did talk to Chad. It looks like Chad won some events out there and swam okay. Yeah. He swam the, the 50s and the 100s. These 50s were slow as per usual. His 100s were solid 52 0 in the fly, 49 yeah. 1. That was a mm. close race in the 100 freestyle. There was like Two other guys at 49-1, a couple at 49-2. But overall, it's just it's nothing huge to write home about in terms of times. But, you know, it's nice to see people racing again and start to watch them times come down over the next you know few months until we hit trials. Yeah, well, I'll say uh, the Hanson sisters were out there. We, we had Luis on the podcast, uh, came yep. out last week, and she was talking about her training, and she went out there and won four events. So... She swam real well. She's she's training now with her sister Sophie. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, it's, it looked like that whole group went out there and swam pretty well. Yeah, no, I, like to be honest, Louise was really quite unchallenged in her races. I think she won the hundred fly by like two and a half seconds, and mm. that's sort of like the depth of these meets. Like she was really good. I think fifty-seven one or fifty-seven two in the hundred fly, uh, sixty point low in the hundred backstroke, but again was winning you know two to three seconds. Uh, Sophie actually broke Ruta Melatite's meet record in the 50 breaststroke. She went 30.6, which is it's pretty firing. Um, so, yeah, no, it looks like Luffer already swimming really well. Um, mm. Dan Within was there, the distance swimmer. He had some really close races with uh, Romanchuk of Ukraine. Uh, they sort of went neck and neck the whole way for the 1500, um, uh, going 14.59 and 15.00, and then, and then Nate. Then Dan won the 800 with 753. So there was, there was good swims, um, especially off the back of like uh, altitude training for the likes of Dan Whiffin and some of the love for people. So, yeah, it was, you know, it's it's good racing, but it doesn't really mean that much in the grand scheme of things. Yeah, yeah. Uh, here's, here's a good comment here. I think swimming needs a professional swimming league. You know what? i got a really interesting podcast coming out tomorrow. It's actually my number 299. We're up to 299 podcasts release. Uh, 300's coming up. Uh, I'm excited about that too. But 299 is actually Pat Forty. Now, if you know anything about professional sports in America, Pat Forty is one of the biggest writers. He, he writes for uh, Sports Illustrated um, and, and a couple of other organizations. But he, he's huge on Twitter. So go get on um, Pat Forty on Twitter. But um, one of the biggest writers in in um, college sports in America. He's on the podcast tomorrow. His daughter at Brooke actually swam at Stanford, uh, went on to win an Olympic medal for the U.S. in, in Tokyo, um, competed against the likes of Katie Ledecky and, and others. And I actually talked to him about this. Uh, I asked him, you know, where does swimming stand in the whole professional scheme of American sport and how, what can it do better? What can the athletes 
do better to, to build their brand. Um, so we go deep dive into kind of his take on professional swimming, um, the things that, that we're doing well, the things we could do better, both as a, kind of an organization and, and individually as athletes. So I would highly recommend listening to this podcast that's coming out tomorrow with Pat Forty. Really good stuff. And I'm, I'm thankful he did that. A uh, little twist on swimming, you know, talking, talking to different people with different opinions. Uh, it was good. Really good. Who, who is number 300? Are we, are we going pop off again? Come on. There's got to be a good number 300. No, 300 is my man uh, from Black Hawk Down. I told you that. Oh, uh, yes, you know. yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So a re- really in-depth talk about leadership and um, performing under pressure, all those sorts of things. Obviously, this man was in, uh, in the situation in Mogadishu, uh, you know, many years ago. And we've all seen the movie. If you haven't seen Black Hawk Down, get get watching it before this release next week. But he's number three hundred. I want to do something special. I want to do something a little different. Couldn't have Pop Off again. He 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 did the fifty and the hundred. Um, but uh, no, um, you know, uh, very very good podcast coming out. Um, oh, three hundred. So yeah, that'll be fun. It's insane. That's a lot. Of, that's a lot of podcast. That's a lot of hours. Of talking to awesome people, that's like over 300 hours, then, right? That's got to be a lot, a lot of what? clips in there, mate. Yeah, that's 450, 500 hours of you chatting wow. to good people. That's insane. That's a, that's an education in on itself. I mean, you think about going to college, right? Like, what do people go to college for? Is to listen and learn, and really, that's what I've done here. Is as a, I'm now kind of like an encyclopedia of of swimming and swimming performance at the high, highest level. I mean, ge- generally, I talk to the, the top performers in the world, you know, I don't, I don't talk to a lot of um, kind of high school coaches necessarily um, on a regular. My lights just went out. I got to, there we go. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm talking to the best athletes, best coaches in the world at the highest level. And mate, I've just got an, I've just got an encyclopedia in my head now, education. But if we go through these podcasts and we, we start to use AI to kind of maybe chop some of these up, there's some content in there, man, that just has kind of disappeared, but should be should be reinvented reinvigorated you know to to you know chop it up bring it out and repurpose it because there's just some gold in there that you know what it's like there's just gold in those podcasts so we're going to start to spend some time kind of going back into the catalog and doing a little bit of that stuff so really good stuff um Uh yeah I'd love to see AI like compile everything that's been in all the podcasts and like put together stuff that repeats, you know, stuff that's been said again and again by athletes and coaches and kind of make like a guidebook of swimming based on just the stuff from your, your podcast. Because guess what? Guess what? That's what we're doing at any question. This is my office. I work for any question. We're creating playlists of knowledge. And I'm glad you touched on this. This is exactly what we're doing at any question. So, you know, you've gone in there and you've answered, you know, a thousand questions, right? But a lot of them have just kind of, they're they're all over the place. They're dispersed. And so what we're doing at any question is now we're creating playlists of knowledge, just like Spotify. So if somebody went in there and said, I want to learn how to be better at underwater dolphin kick, you would get a playlist of coaches talking about underwater dolphin kick. And all you have to do is click on it and listen to it and download it. So, any questions doing that, my friend, and we're, we're, uh, we're going to revolutionize um, the way people learn in the future. So um, if, you, if you're not on any question, it's free, guys. Like, get on there now. But I'm telling you, the things that we've got coming in the future, this team of people that are working here, uh, it's going to be some interesting uh, stuff in the next few months. Let's go on to the uh, USA Swimming kind of Olympic trial. They revealed their their Olympic trial uh, order of events. Uh, a couple of interesting things in there, you know, some of the big time players. I think one of the first ones was kind of uh, Katie Ledecky, right? Like, um, tell me about that. Yeah, are, are we talking about just in terms of uh, her, her meat lineup? I think I think yeah. something to do with this switching up the two hundred freestyle so she doesn't have to double up. I want to see right? if I can. Ledecky will now go the 400 free, 200 free, 1500, 800. The set schedule will keep her physically and mentally fresh is what Nate says. So there it is. Looks like Ledecky's going to get a sh- clean shot at all of her swims rather than having to double up on some of those nights. Yeah, there we go. So, uh, yeah, Saturday, she'll have the 400 freestyle. Mm-hmm. Then she'll have the 200 freestyle on Sunday. 
And then she'll have a day, day no, no, yeah, day off on Monday. Tuesday, she'll get the 1500. Mm-hmm. Wednesday, she'll have the day off, which will be the 1500 final. Thursday, she'll have the day off. And then 800 heat, 800 final. So, yeah, like really spreading out yeah. her events yeah. nicely. Um, Carsten. Yeah. Yeah. Carsten looks like he's he's got, he's got some trouble there with the 200 yeah. free, 400 IM back double. Back. Yeah. That's a shame because he's like he'll be a mainstay on that 200 free relay, I think, for years to come for, for mm. the USA. And you know, obviously he's a 400 iron swimmer and the second best in the world behind Leon. So uh yeah, that's, that's a, a tough shame. schedule. Yeah, he tough just, schedule. He, he just needs to make the, the semis, right? He just needs to make the semis, make the final, like eighth, and just get through. Um yeah, but that, that mentality sucks sometimes, you know, when you're feeling like, oh, let me just scrape through, and then all yeah. of a sudden you you scrape right. out and you and yeah. you miss it, you know, and you're still tired. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you're he, still tired. It doesn't like you save much energy doing it, you know. He, he to me, honestly, he's fast all the way through. I think he's 200 free PB is like from the semi or the heat from trials last year. Like he's normally someone who just gets after it from the get-go, yeah. to be honest. So uh I, I, I think he'll be all right. He's a good swimmer. He's a fine yeah. I'm sure yeah. he can do enough to, to do what needs to be done. Um, yeah, he's fine. I'm more worried about Michael Andrew there. If you look at him, he's got that 200 IM 50 free back to back. That's a tough double right there. Really yeah. tough. Yeah. I don't like that at all. So, um, well, and, yeah. and he's, you know, he's best in the world practically at both of them, you know, like he's quality. But when you go back to back, I mean, you're wrecked. Yeah. Imagine, so swimming, had- imagine swimming an all-out 100 IM, fly back, hitting your yeah. breaststroke legs, and then having to stand up on the block five minutes later and try and knock out a 53. I mean... It's actually yeah. the 53 first, and then you have the 200 back final for women, and then he's up for the 200 IM. That's brutal. That's really brutal. Well, what about the semi? Isn't the semi like the 200 IM before the 53? So the night before... Look at that. Oh, they're literally so it, the night before is two IM semi into fifty three semi, no woman event in between. Yeah, and back to back. Time. I mean, literally back to back. Two hundred IM fifty three, like that's, and, and you're racing the fastest guys in in America, which is potentially you know top twenty. You know, if you, the top eight guys in America are potentially top twenty in the world. You know, so yeah. he's got to go back to back on that schedule. That's tough, man. Yeah, he's gonna he's got a lot of work cut out from there. Like just making the finals, and if he gets the finals, it's the same issue again. Is it the um, same schedule for the games? Is that what they're doing? Uh, same schedule for Paris. I mean, are they? Are they I, I thought just pool boy, out. pool boy should know this stuff, mate. Come yeah. on, you're you're the smarter than us. Send us a link. Uh, uh, yeah. There we go. I know that's what Australia always did. They always just mimicked whatever the the you know the the real. Here we go. We're we're on the website. It's looked the same. I'm looking for it. You got uh, that. You got that two IM fifty free back to back on that one. Where 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 is the two IM? It was like towards the end semi final. There you go. Yeah, it is back to back. Friday, yeah, back to back. Oh, that's a bitch. Well, do we do we do we do we think that Michael Andrew does the two hundred IM? I mean, Michael Andrew could could potentially be the best two hundred IM in the world. What are you talking about? But yeah, he also is great at the fifty three style. Like, well, I know, and that's the thing that kills him right here. That back to back is a it, that's not fun at all. And then and and let's say he does make it through the trials, well, then you've got to get to the you got to get to the games themselves and do back to back. I mean, that's a whole nother level in itself. Do you think that's a good idea for him to go for that? Like, uh, no, do but I don't think you know. I, there's a lot of people that say Michael Andrew doesn't have good ideas, but he ends up doing them and pulls them <laughs> off. <laughs> All right. I mean, I if mean, Michael, An- if anyone in the world of swimming you can criticize for not having good ideas, it's Michael Andrew. Everyone's like, "Oh, that's a bad idea," and then he goes and proves us all wrong. And you're like, "Oh, well, maybe I should have shut up in that instance." Uh, uh, yeah, I-, I still think Michael Andrew can win that 200 IM. I think on his day, like. He, he can do it. He he can get to 150 so quick. He can he can come back in 29.5. That will win. He just can't come back in 30 point. And it's not yeah. that it's it's not impossible. Like I, I really I think he's got more chance of winning the 2 I am than the 53 star. Yeah. Uh 
I, I think um, right now that that is been proven right now. But then again, you know, where does he put his focus and attention? Mm-hmm. Who knows? Um, that's really up to him. And, that, and that's that's the beauty of Michael Andrew. He proves us all wrong. He, we, we say this is what he should do. And then he goes and does the opposite and, and proves us wrong. So, but look, on this occasion, I think it's a very, very tough double. He's got he's got some world class guys, as you say, um, Cassis and, and Carson Foster, like you know, potentially potentially could win gold themselves. You know, like the U.S. Yeah. is in a conundrum here where you got some of the best swimmers in the world that could potentially be Olympic champion uh, in this event. You know, there's there's multiples of them, so it just yeah. depends on who turns up on the day. Uh, interesting event schedule there. Uh, let's go back to Regan Smith. Regan has her own challenges, it looks like. She's got the 200 back semi and then uh, 200 fly final. Yeah. That's tough too. You know what? Like, without being critical to women's swimming, but the depth in women's swimming is not the same. Like, Regan is someone who really can go PB plus five on the 200 back and still make the final. I guess, I, I guess, in terms of making finals, yes, like yeah. winning the events a different thing. The, the top end is the top end, right? No, of course, um, of course. But, but she yeah. swims a two fly, and then she gets a rest, then she goes two back. I, I, I just, I don't think that's anywhere near as critical. I think she'll be yeah. fine. Yeah, like, you're probably right. Probably right. Um, yeah. Um, listen, we talked about this. There, there's, there's a few other things to talk about here, and little things here and there. But you know what? We're going to open it up to the to the comments section. We want you guys to put in comments or put in questions. We've got another 10 minutes before I have to take off. I've got to get back to work here, but this has been fun. What do we got here? We'd like to see a couple of the US uni teams versus Bath and Loughborough and, and Sterling in like a head to head meet. Could you know what? That's not a bad idea. That could be fun. Couldn't it? You know, I, I think so. I mean, the thing with Bucks and you spoke to Louise on the podcast about Bucks and, that whole situation and Bucks is weak because we don't have qualifying time. So to go to the British university championships, you don't need to qualify. You can swim at any university in the UK. And if you're picked by your team, you go. Mm, mm. And that means you can go times that are like heat. One is like 32 plus 50 freestyle meters long course. You know, I'm talking dead slow. Um, so people like it's, it's really a three way race between Bath, Loughborough and Sterling and Loughborough win by lows. But I still think Loughborough could be competitive with the best of US colleges. Mm. Because Loughborough are really good. They're not challenged in the UK. But I reckon... But, like but the problem is the Luff, Loughborough team is made up of postgrads, right? Yes, there is some yeah. postgrads. Yeah. So it's like a, it's a postgrad team, whereas any college team is just going to be, you know, undergrad. So yeah. that's, that's the problem with that concept. But it um, yeah, sounds like fun. Even if you took away the postgrads, it's not loads. They're still mainly uni age. They're still mainly in their first four years. Uh, or you've got to remember as well, UK uni is three years and college is four years anyway. So, if you know, mm. if you give people four years of elig- like, it would only be a fun meet anyway. I, th- I think it could be really, really competitive, you know. Uh, Paul Bury yeah. said, I, I remember this. There was a dual meet between uh, Toronto with Loughborough a few years ago. I- I'd love to see it. Cow or Texas versus, versus, you know, Loughborough or Sterling. Could be fun, I think, for sure. Yeah, but they, I think I think the uh, the British teams would have to come to America and swim yards, wouldn't they? That that would be really fun in itself, anyway. I think you mm. know, like uh, see see the British guys do yards for the first time. Um, yeah, out of season, you know, out of season, or maybe 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 out of season, you come over and do a fun uh, long course. Yeah, you know, maybe you do a fun long course dual meet. I don't know, but um, that's just us spitballing. But that would, that kind of be fun. What have we got here? Yeah, any other any other questions in there that you got you want to talk about? Um, we'll answer questions if you got questions. Yeah, um, come on, hit us up here, guys. What do you got? Summit short course and call it quits. I mean, it it doesn't really matter. It's a fun event. It's only for bragging rights. So you know, if it's in season, it's going to have to be yards because that's all the colleges care about. But you know, it can be anything. It can be anything, and it can be really fun. I think um, maybe it will happen. Uh, until we get another question, let, let's 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 watch this. What is this? This is Ryan Hoffer, hundred yard freestyle. Oh yeah, this was from back when back when he was in high school. Do you remember, do you remember this swim? Like, uh, what, what did you think at the time? 
I, I, I remember thinking two things. I remember thinking he's in trouble in college because how do you go faster than that if you're swimming that fast in, in high school? I thought, I thought he's going to really mentally mess himself up because to me that almost looked like a perfect swim, you know, for for a high school kid. Like he, there wasn't much development left. I didn't see where you could develop more than what he had, you know. But yeah, um, yeah I, I imagine there would be some minor improvements don't get me wrong i didn't think he would would go slower in college but i didn't think he was going to be dropping a full second from that and i thought to myself well that's going to mess his head up and ultimately that's i think uh i don't know about messing his head up but ultimately that's what happened in college he didn't get faster necessarily and so that can play on you you know when you're a sprinter and you and you pump that out in high school it's tough you know one thing i'll say about uh hoffa's retirement is it's it's sad to me you know, he's going into medical sales, which is great. He's moving on with his life. But, like, you can do medical sales anytime you want. You can never go back and be a swimmer at that level again where you're, you're a year out from Paris and you take a swing at it. You know, like, just – and you're that good. You know what I mean? Like, you're that good. Take a swing at Paris and then go on to be medical sales. You know what I mean? Like, you're not – it's not like he's, he's putting something drastic on hold – you know, not taking anything away from medical sales, but you can do that in a year's time from now. So anyway, that's my that's my opinion. I don't know if he was injured. I don't know if he was just burnt out. Many other factors with that. I just think a year out from the Olympics, have one more crack at it at your age, you know? Yeah, I think he might be another one who's got hit by the ISL. He was obviously on DC Trident last year. And just mm-hmm. ISL might have been another reason for him to just, you know, keep swimming. It's a little bit of money and so it's a fun thing to do and travel and, Without the ISL, he might be someone who just thought, "Wow, it's a long way to go now till uh, till Paris." And because he, I, I don't think he's probably swum in about a year now. Like I don't think he's really swum, yeah, yeah. in a while. Yeah. So I, I don't think this. I think it's the fish he announced, but uh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. What, what does this mean, Chiefs? I'm an Eagle, Eagles. Eagles fan. This, this is the Super Bowl that has been decided uh, last yeah. night. Uh, we got the. We've got the Chiefs and and the Philadelphia Eagles. So Kansas City Chiefs, Philadelphia Eagles. I'm I'm a Phillies guy all the way, uh, Phillies. So I think um, first time in history, two black quarterbacks are coming up against each other in the Super Bowl. So that'll be interesting. Uh, but I think the the Eagles all the way. Yes. What about this uh, comment here? Any thoughts on Ryan Murphy's 200 back in Rio? What does that mean? Uh, do, do you mean is he going to be good in Paris? Is it is it a typo, or do you mean what well, you know? How was he swimming back in Rio? It was what good, right? Like he, he he won. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Uh, Paris. Um, I don't think I don't think anyone touches Murphy unless it's a Russian. Uh, you know, so unless the Russians come back and are able to swim, I just I always put my money on uh, Murphy. But um, you know, the, the the Russian boys can go. We've seen that, but uh, it'll be interesting to see how that plays out. I don't know. Um, yeah. He's going for the Chiefs. Uh, Patricia's going for the Chiefs. Okay. Any reason, Patricia? Like Patrick Mahomes fan? So what's going on here? What are, what are we talking about here? What's this? Anyone talking about a, sw- a swim league like the ISL? US? No. No one's got the money, mate. There's no money in swimming. That's the problem, you know? That, might be that, a little, leads, yeah, that leads on to this. Might be um, a little bit of money in Australia. They're talking about like bumping up the coaches in Australia because Australia has the Olympics coming up in Brisbane in, what, 32. So we're, we're years away from that. But I'll tell you this, the Sydney effect. What happened in Sydney when we were awarded the Olympics, swimming went from, uh, you know, out there begging on the streets to basically an influx of money. You know, training camps were available to swimmers, you know, opportunities cash you know anything that they could pump into us being successful in sydney about eight years out is what happened and uh you know i I think the same thing's going to happen here for brisbane uh paris might be a little bit too early i think they're talking about hey pay these coaches so we can have success in paris i think it might be a little too late for that but i think by the time you know we're five four or five years out four or five years out from uh uh brisbane i think that's when it that's when it uh, really takes off but um all right uh one more question i gotta wrap up and leave well patricia said about uh yeah texas um texas tech quarterback 
Um, oh, she's yeah. from Texas. Yeah. And then Paul Bowie said, wasn't Australia playing an ISL style competition? I, I remember that being a thing. Oh, yeah, that died. I, I saw an article come out about that. That that whole thing died long ago. That died before the ISL died. So, yeah, I think um, I think there was some bad business going on there too. So, quick, <sighs> one, quick one. Quick one for you, Brett. Who will be the next 23, 51, 154 female freestyler after Showstrom and McKeon? Oh, um, uh, what's her name? Molly. Molly. Molly O'Callaghan. Molly O'Callaghan, yeah. Molly O'Callaghan. Training with Dean Boxall. I think she's the next superstar. She she doesn't get out as fast. You know, she doesn't have that top end yet. But I think I don't think 51. I think 50 point. I think 50 point is on the cards for a female swimmer coming within the next 12 months. And I think she's kind of in a prime position. I think McKeon too uh, could potentially be there. But I think Molly... I think Molly has a 50 point in a uh, – let's let's keep an eye on that. Maybe you can come back on this day, take my little prediction here 12 months from now, and we can, we can say that I said it, you know, 50 point. All right, got to go, man. Good stuff. See, See you guys.